What up? Welcome into Studio Day Heffrey Cowboy fans. We got some things to talk about today, including the Cowboys secondary, Michael Gallup's future with the team, the early Zeke, and Tony Pollard returns, and all sorts of things that I've gotten a mailbag for you. I take mailbag questions at JC1053 on Twitter and in the comments of this video at uh, youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. So pro football focus before a season starts, they go through each position group and they rank the teams, right? So yesterday, the position group that they did is the secondary. And I'm going to wait about two seconds and let you try to guess where the Cowboys rank when it comes to ranking secondaries going into a season. About 31, 31st. They rank as the second worst secondary in the league. Now, this is obviously subjective, right? This is based on their grading and stats, but stats are a real thing. And so as you go around this secondary, there's going to have to be considerable improvement if you're not going to have a bad defense this year. Obviously, last year's Cowboy defense gave up 29.6 points per game. That is 28th in the league in points per game allowed. And if you average out all the rankings that I've seen do, that's pro football focus, PFF, uh, they have the Cowboys D-line as 27th, the secondary 31st, and the linebackers as 6th. That works out to about the 21st ranked defense, which isn't ridiculous. You're hoping it'll be better with a change at defensive coordinator, but namely in the secondary. What has to happen for this to be a better group? Because I know every time that a guy leaves, it's just like, well, he wasn't any good anyway. So like Cheeto being gone, it's like, sweet, we got a bunch of draft picks, like we're going to be fine. But in an honest evaluation of last year, when you look at the Cowboys secondary, let's start with Trayvon Diggs, who I think everybody's a fan of. I'm a fan of. Uh, He didn't have a great rookie year. He had an up and down rookie year. Like rookie corners are going to have, he showed a lot of promise in terms of getting his hands on the football. He was a lot better in zone than he was in man. So are there strides you could take? Could Dan Quinn help? Can the defensive line help? Obviously, the answer to all those things are yes. But you take Trayvon Diggs, and then at the moment, you take Jordan Lewis starting in the slot and Anthony Brown starting on the outside. Speaking without any Homer goggles on, I try not to wear Homer goggles, both Brown and Lewis would have to play considerably better than they did a year ago and than they have over the course of their careers to be considered quality starters at corner. Uh, they are starting-ish corners. There's a lot of teams in the league that struggle at corner. But you have, I believe, one ascending one and Trevon Diggs, who this year I think will be a solid starter. And you have two guys that I believe, unfortunately, are below average starters. So the hope is that what we start hearing about Kelvin Joseph in these practices starts turning heads a little bit because in yesterday's practice, what we heard is that CeeDee Lamb made him slip and fall down on a touchdown and other uh, just comments, just things you hear about, oh, is he ready? Is he in shape? And then he had the 10-day quarantine period. And so you'd love to hear that Kelvin Joseph is coming and taking one of those spots because his college tape, I believe, is that of a first-round-ish player. It's just a matter of everything that has nothing to do with his college tape that led him to being picked in the middle of the second round. And so you need to see improvement from him. DeMonte KZ, he's got to get back to, I believe it was 2018 when he had a bunch of picks and plays on the ball. So DeMonte KZ, your free safety is a little ways removed from the last time that he was a really good safety. And Donovan Wilson needs to get into practice. They're nursing a knee with him. He hasn't practiced yet. They're saying that it's no big deal. Um, but also our Brian Broadus, who you can hear every day, 2 to 7, 105.3 The Fan, or the Odyssey app, A-U-D-A-C-Y, on the home of the Cowboys, uh, mentioned that you might hear some whispers that Donovan Wilson might have been getting fitted for his Hall of Fame jacket after last year. So there are things in the secondary that are going to have to take major strides if you're going to avoid being anywhere near where Pro Football Focus has them ranked going into the year, which is number 31. All right, now, let us get into some of our mailbag questions of the day. I appreciate uh, how many I got from you guys. You guys are badasses. Probably going to have you a projected 53-man roster later on today, so make sure um, that you're checking 1053thefan.com and that you're subscribed at youtube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh, and you'll catch that. My buddy Patrick Walker did one. No C there at Voice of the Star, and he did a good job. He did a good job. My favorite thing is not doing the work and being like, ah, I think you missed that one out of 53. And so uh, I will put out my 53, my June 10th 53-man roster, and then we'll correct it in a couple of months while we're at training camp. All right, mailbag questions. 
Mick Candles, do you think Dak and Zeke return to all pro slash Pro Bowl level before the season starts? I'm a Zeke hater, and by Zeke hater, I mean paying running back hater. Um, but yes, I think that Zeke will be really, really good this year. By all accounts, it looks like he took this offseason incredibly seriously in terms of trying to get back some of that quickness and some of that explosiveness, and he's looking good in the early practices. So healthy, motivated, Busting ass in the offseason, Zeke, yeah, I think he'll return to Pro Bowl level. Now, all pro and Pro Bowl for running backs a lot of times just means how many carries do you get. And in that regard, like I don't think Zeke's going to be top three in the league in carries, but I think when he has the ball that he's going to do his job quite well. Dak, yes, Dak has been over the course of his career a what? Top six to eight quarterback in the NFL. And just think about what's going on at practice right now. Guys who had off-season surgeries. Blake Jarwin is not practicing. Tyron Smith is not practicing. Amari Cooper is not practicing. Zach Martin's not practicing. Lyle Collins is not practicing. And Dak Prescott, who had the surgery that we're all worried about the most, is out there practicing. Now, he's not full go. He's not doing 11 on 11. Because then when you have somebody roll up on his ankle or something dumb happen, you're like, what were we doing? But Dak's out there getting work in. And he's the one guy that had an off-season surgery that's out there working. So I'm actually not worried about Dak. Uh, yes, he'll play at a Pro Bowl level. Yes, he'll put up silly good numbers. Can the defense and the special teams be good enough to make your team be really, really good? We shall see, but Dak will be fine. Dak will be great, and Zeke will be very good. Marcus said, do you think Gallup will be traded by the deadline or sign an extension or neither? My guess would be neither. If Michael Gallup's going to sign an extension, it would probably come before the season. And if you could get him on the uh, Dak Prescott is your best friend discount, then it'd probably be a good idea. Uh, but most teams aren't going to have a significant investment in three different receivers plus a quarterback plus a running back. Man, and Jarwin makes pretty good money, plus a tight end. Like, your salary cap space goes away in a hurry. So that's the challenge with Michael Gallup. I think having those three together with him and Lamb and Amari Cooper is great. It's just a matter of how realistic that, like, what is Michael Gallup's market value? I don't have it pulled up in front of me, but I would imagine it's somewhere between 10 and $15 million a year. And that's significant investment. When C.D. Lamb is on a first uh, first round contract, Amari Cooper's getting twenty million dollars a year. So I believe with Gallup, the most likely thing is he's going to play it out. And if he's great and you want to keep him, then you could think about: Am I going to move Amari Cooper? Am I going to try to find a way to keep all three? Uh, if you want to tag him and get one more year, you have that option. If he's going to walk, you get a comp pick. So I think because the Cowboys view themselves as a contender that Michael Gallup's going to play this year out because you get compensation even if he just walks in free agency. So to me, it makes all the sense in the world that he just plays the whole thing out. Ron Doe, which linebacker won't be a Cowboy in 2022? Safest bet is Van Der Esch because he doesn't have a contract in 2022. Uh, and this is another thing where they have really good depth in terms of having three great starting wide receivers, or at least three very good starting wide receivers. They now have great depth at linebacker with two guys that have played really well before. A rookie, a converted safety, well, multiple rookies, and a converted safety. Like They've got a lot of bodies. And so this is another one where I know it's a boring answer. Wait and see. What happens? Does LVE get hurt again? And if he does, it's like, yeah, let's just not worry about that. Let's let him go somewhere else. Uh, does he play and play well? And you want him to be part of a rotation of three or four linebackers that are playing for your team into the future. And then maybe you move on from, let's say, number 54 slash number nine, I guess. Um, it's a wait and see thing. Sal Saul says, I have two. Defense seems to be an afterthought. With what they've done this far, do you think we'll see an improvement? Second question, Dak seems to be the guy for years to come, but does the organization feel that he has some limitations? Thank you. No, the organization doesn't think Dak has any limitations. Everything you, you hear and know about Dak Prescott is, and look, we don't know them personally, but when you're talking about football character, leadership, ability, he has all of that. So they have no doubts about Dak. The defense, you will see an improvement because Mike Nolan's gone. I think – real improvement in terms of the guys on the field being good enough to be like, hey, you know what? That's a good defense. You might be a year away because you have two corners that you drafted in the first three rounds in Deshaun Wright and Kelvin Joseph. You have um, Chauncey Golston and Oso Digizua and Quinn and Bohana. Like, you've got all these defensive linemen. I just I don't think it's wise to assume that a bunch of rookies are going to come into the league and ball out. But I do think Chauncey Golson is a little bit of a Tank Lawrence starter kit. Like, probably not that high end that Tank has gotten to. But 
similar sort of player. And Oso Digizua is a good defensive lineman. Uh, Jabril Cox is, I think, going to be a really good NFL player, but they're rookies. So the idea that you're going to have like five or six defensive rookies that make this impact and turn your defense around, I think that's optimistic. But I think a year from now, you could be looking at something good. Gabriel, do you think Mike McCarthy's on the hot seat, hot seat this season? If not, do you think he will be if they have another disappointing season? Mike McCarthy's absolutely on the hot seat. Because last year's Mike Nolan thing, the not knowing how to deal with the Rona, not knowing how to get ready for a football season, not having a defense who had any clue what they were doing, Mike McCarthy hired him. That's Mike McCarthy's guy. They had to fire, what, three or four defensive coaches? Those are Mike McCarthy hires. So, yeah, McCarthy is expected to win this division. He's expected to win double-digit games. And if he doesn't, then I bet Mike McCarthy has a two-year stint in Dallas, and that is the end of it. Uh, DC real talk. I feel like I was saying, sure, we just have Jalen on the bench is one thing, but the Cowboys are actually putting the face of the defense on the bench. Do you really see that possible? Sure, it's possible. If he gets outplayed, because I don't, like, Jerry Jones is important. He's, an, he's a big part of the Cowboys, right? I don't think Jerry Jones is going to be telling Dan Quinn, who, <laughs> excuse me, remember how to talk, idiot. Freaking stupid head. Allergies. Take your Zizol. Get it together, dude. Um, Dan Quinn's going to pick who plays on defense, I believe. If that's not the case, then you're just screwed. You're screwed forever. Brian, how much would it improve the team if it turned out they hit big on seven of their or seven or eight of their eleven draft picks this year? I know that seriously sounds like a joke, but I really have a good feeling about this draft class. I do too. I have a good feeling about this draft class. I think that. Eight of them are going to make the team out of your, what do they pick, 11 guys? I think eight or nine of your 11 picks are going to make the team. And I think Joseph is definitely talented enough to turn into a good NFL starter. Micah Parsons is talented enough to be a star. Oso Odigizua and Chauncey Golson are good enough um, to be NFL starters. Uh, Jabril Cox, I think, is potentially an NFL star. I think they've, they got a nice group of dudes. So there's going to be a bunch of hits in here. Uh, that's probably good. Probably going to go. Got stuff to do. Snacks to have. Things of that nature. All right. Leave in the comments what you want to talk about tomorrow. Hmm? Hmm? YouTube.com slash Jeff Cavanaugh. Um, what is your favorite tool? Like a screwdriver? Uh, one of these, uh, what is this? A drywall screw? Maybe you're a fan of the power tool. Maybe you're a big hedge trimmer guy. What's your favorite tool? Leave that in the comments. Just something for the algorithm. And um, that's about it. So remember, you have no idea what anybody's going through, so be cool to everybody. 53-man roster probably coming up later today. And I love you. Bye.